solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. So, uh, congratulations on the book. Hey, thanks, DJ. The CEO Factory, and uh, thanks for making time for the Play to Potential podcast. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, before we dive into the book, Sudhir, uh, you share some stunning statistics yeah. uh, that uh, you talk about over a 60 year period where uh, the economy multiplied 1400x, yeah. but HUL earnings multiplied 6000x. Yeah. Before we uh, study HUL's, uh, let's say, secret sauce, yeah. uh, give us a sense of why we should study it. Give us a significance of the journey. Yeah. No, HUL, DJ, is quite a remarkable company. You know, one of, There are many remarkable statistics about HUL. One of them, which a lot of people find fascinating, is 9 out of 10 Indians, which is close to 1.15 or 1.2 billion Indians, use an HUL product every month. That's more than, forget Google or Facebook, it's more than electricity, it's more than voting, it's more than people have access to roads. So there is very, very few things in India which will unify people as much as their you know, usage of an HUL product, which is a kind of a you know, always worth remembering. But the other really interesting thing about HUL is a very old company. You know, in 19, it, it was really formed 125 years ago, but in its current form in 1958. And when I looked at the annual report of HUL in 1958, uh, you know, I saw that our profits were a crore. In the period of uh, 60 years, uh, the company has grown 6,000 times, which is a 15% earning CAGR over six decades. Now, lots of companies have spectacular 10-year records of doubling, trebling, etc. But it's very hard to consistently grow earnings 15%. So, you know, in terms of the financial performance, and you know, in 19, uh, in the late 50s when it was formed, it was a top five company in India. In 1986, when the Sensex was formed, it was the fourth largest company in terms of market cap. And today, it's the fourth largest company in terms of market cap. So. Maybe with the exception of General Electric, uh, there are very few companies that have been top of the game for a 60 year period, which actually counts for a, a lot. Uh, it kind of means that the, you know, the vicissitudes of various external changes notwithstanding, this kind of company has motored on. And then there are other remarkable statistics about HUL. You know, it's well known as a CEO factory. Last when we counted, we were able to count 400 CEOs or CXOs who are from Unilever. Over the last decade, AC Nielsen has a dream employer of the year in the top 20 MBA schools. And I think in eight of those 10 years, HUL has been number one. Even in the last, you know, for example, the return on capital invested, which is a really good measure of how efficient a company is, HUL has close to 100% ROC. Uh, you know, the, even the CPG averages, and CPG already returns capital very well, is in the 30s. So whether you look at long-term metrics, short-term metrics, sort of consumer metrics, human metrics, and then there's this qualitative thing about, because HUL has been around so long, the HUL style of management has permeated many companies in India. So, you know, you may not know it, but there are parts, you know, and I discovered, I was telling you when I was working with my publisher that many parts of HUL are there in many parts of corporate India. So I guess that's the, that's why I think it's a sort of important company worth being studied. Lovely. And when you say 400, is it Unilever or HUL? HUL. Wow. HUL. Oh, that's a stunning statistic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, in my past life as a search consultant, uh, yeah. I guess I was, uh, I did some of those uh, placements as well.